Wow, go on, wow, go on. He's on though, fam. He's on, he's on, he's on. I'm only gonna jump on for 10 minutes. Basically, man's just done making a video. So I thought, you know, let me just quickly jump on a live, see who's about. Let me check the playback. This thing even public. I'll give it five minutes. No one's on, no one's talking in the chat. I'm just gonna come off the live stream anyway. So I know most people are probably uh the best time to do live streams is like eight o'clock at night. Check the playback. So I know most people probably uh the best time to do live streams like eight o'clock at night. Is that though in the in the in the in the chat? Giving it two minutes and no one's talking in the chat coming off, blood. What's going on, fam? Whereabouts are you? Where are you located, fam? But yeah, just to let you know, this ain't a proper live stream like what man used to do before, like eight o'clock and that. I just thought, you know, let me just quickly come on and see you's about. But if no one's talking in the chat or nothing like that, or giving me no topic to talk about, I'm just gonna come off in two, three minutes. But yeah, whereabouts are you located in Britain, man? I said I'm surrounded by enough Turks. Well, you ain't, you ain't. I mean, you ain't in in London though, because obviously, if you're from London, you just say London. You want to say Britain, but I mean. The only place I know where there's bare Turkish people is somewhere in London, isn't it? Like, 
in my area, Edmonton, it's not even Turks, more Kurdish people than that. But bare Kurds in, in Edmonton. My man love my, my, my Kurdish people, I'm not gonna lie, fam. They're the best neighbors to have as well. They don't play loud music, they're not on some anti-social behavior, nothing like that. But at the same time, like they're respectful people, but you can't test them as well. That's what my love about the Turks and that. I was even explaining to someone. Um, like they're not from London or nothing like that. But obviously, the biggest threat on the road in London is us black people and that. But I was saying, even us black people being the biggest threat on the road. Where did you type? What did What did you type in? I can't see it. Oh, Enfield. I knew it. If you're surrounded by Turks, it has to be it has to be London somewhere, and I just thought you you weren't from London because you didn't say. Said Britain, but anyway, um, what was I gonna say? Yeah, obviously, the biggest threat on the world is us black people from is, is us black people and that. But even though we're the biggest threat and that, black people, we still think twice about testing a Turkish man, you know, them Kurdish man that own them shops and that. Them man, they're serious, you know, them man, they grow up in the mountains, you know, them man, they are willing to, you get me, stand toe to toe with a black man, they don't care, they don't business, blood. Literally, that's why man love them Kurdish man there. Cool man. Whereabouts in Enfield are you, dog? Because it's a big place. I think Congolese are more dangerous. Yeah, hey, obviously, man used to roll with them Congolese youths back in the day. I say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, in Edmonton, us Jamaicans are not holding it down because it's none of us really. It's mostly like Congolese, Ghanaians, and Nigerians in Edmonton and that. Yeah, quite a few Congolese people in that in Enfield. Many men then as well don't get it tested. Is it? I don't know no Romanian people in it, so but where 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 are these Romanian people located though? What part of the ends? Where whereabouts? What area? Is it by Tesco's? What the Ponders and Tesco's? Is that the one you're talking about, fam? Like, you lot are lucky to still be living in the ends. You know how desperate man is to move back to the ends. I hate living up here in Northampton, man. Dead. Dead. There's nothing to do, fam. Okay, Ponders and Tesco's and that. So what school do you go to then? Or did? My man went to um not that Winchmore school. That's where man went. Best school in the bar, but man first started off by going um uh outward. I went outward. I was there for about I think it was eight days or something. Then I got accepted into Winchmore because I was on the reserve list. Boom, as soon as my mum got the, the letter that I've been accepted into Winchmore, she took me out outward. I was off school for about a day or two. We ran around, wrote about this in my book. We ran around, got the uniform for Winchmore, and bam, next thing you know, man, since Winchmore started on my mom's birthday as well. Yeah. Cause like when I was at Howard, when I first went, I didn't feel like this was the school I was supposed to go to. Like, I didn't want to go there anyway. Oh man, so you went to Haverstock. Oh, okay. Oh, so you'll you'll be older than me. If you left school in 05, that means that you're probably about 34, 30, between 33 and 35 or something like that. But um, um, yeah, I didn't want to go to Howard. And even during the summer holidays, before I started year seven, I went to this kind of like a play scheme thing just to get settled in and that. And I'd been there for like two, three weeks and that. And I still didn't feel like I was meant to be in that school. I didn't feel comfortable in that school. And it's not because oh, I secondary school, it's big school. I don't know, I just didn't feel like I belonged in that school. But as soon as I went to Winch, I was there for a couple of days, but I'm like, yeah, this is the school that man's supposed to be, like, supposed to have gone to. Ended up getting kicked out at the end, though, but not, like, unofficial. I unofficially got kicked out, you get me? Like, so basically, I used to buy and sell Christmas drinks in school and that. And um, there was one day where the 
the fire alarm went off like three, four times in the day. Like this is all before like first break time, you know, in like first break times at like, I don't know, 10 o'clock or something. The alarm, fire alarm went off three times. I thought, you know, fun this. Let me run out and go to the local Sainsbury, which is near Winchmore Hill, to get some more stock to sell and that. So a man's trying to run through the school and that got caught by one teacher. And then I was on my second final warning anyway. So they just said, don't come back to school until the, um, you know, the GCSEs and that in May. Uh, it was only one week. So I got unofficially kicked out. Yeah, got unofficially kicked out. Um, yeah. My mum, my mum was actually about then, you know. No, but yeah, my mum, my mum was um, in Jamaica. So I've gone home and I had to tell my stepdad he is kiss his teeth. And then I had to phone my mum and tell her, oh, I've been kicked out of school. And I'm like, it's cool, it's cool, it's cool. There's only one week left in it, so I'm just going to stay at home, in it. And yeah, I was just playing Xbox and that. Then went back to school and done my exams. I just coasted through school, just flew through school, innit? So me, I came out of school with like seven C's, basically. But as a bare minimum, I should have been a B student. And if I'd applied myself, could have been an A student or a low grade A. So like, let's say A minus. I don't even think they do that in the UK, but yeah. But a minimum, I should have got B's. And if I'd applied myself, I should have got like uh, A's, like a low grade A. All right, boom, let me see this one. Yeah, done. Now, which one was the one, fam? Right, and I said, Jay, there was a young mixture she on Instagram that was sending for black girls saying me. One of those black girls that I like working. Have I see that, blood? What <laughs> What can I say, fam? My, you, I know he's like one of them, them mixture issues that go around, go around being a white man anyway. And his mixture is, blood. You don't need to stop stop getting this thing twisted. Mixed race people are not black. They're not white. They're mixed race blood. So how can you expect him to just because you know the the world portrays mixed race people as being black? They're not black. So I would expect man to have them warped type of mindsets anyway. He's a YouTuber type of guy. You can tell he's not from the ends yet. I mean, I made a video before. I don't know if you've seen it about why the cancel culture is growing and that. Listen, if you blink out a line, if you spit out a line, they're going to cancel you and that. If you're a dickhead and you chat shit, you're going to cancel yourself anyway, i.e. people ain't going to want to watch your content. So why do people feel like they need to cancel people? As long as my name trying to really promote hate crime and oh, exterminate this race of people and that, man, let, let you say what you want, blood. Because you will get reprimanded one day. Someone's going to catch you and want to smack you up, blood. Trust me, man's up in Northampton. I made that video talking about basically I was dissing Northampton, basically. And I've had people in the comment section, oh, when I see you and rah, 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 bring it, blood. Bring it. Swing first, blood. You best swing first. And anyone approach me on, I'm going to move to you, blood. But yeah, man will stand by my opinion in that. Um, yeah, you'll get reprimanded. I've even been, I've even been to tenants' houses twice. These young youths have said to me, I've seen your video, you know, you done that video about North Panther. I'm like, yes, blood. I feel like a celebrity, blood. I'm gonna have to start watching that like, heart. Oh, you get me? I feel like I'm I'm being watched and that man. Yeah, but yeah, I see that team there, man. Them man there that, that live quay outside of them man that live quay outside of London and that them man they, they their mindset is just different. Like I spoke about it before. What the one sec. People making up noise at the back. Um, uh, what, I can't remember what I was gonna fucking say now, man. What was I saying? What was I saying? 
Then someone was banging on my fence outside, you know. Uh, boy, that's a tough one, you know. Which I think, uh, yeah, my test should have got cancelled. Ooh. Ooh, that's a tough one. I'd say, you know what? Because obviously, I like Mike Tyson, innit? But for one, you know what? Yeah, I still don't believe that my man's even guilty of that thing. Because if you're going to a hotel and that, you should know what's up. But at the same time, no means no. But I believe, I think the woman lied, innit? I don't know. I don't know. But let's say he was guilty of the crime. He'd done his time. So therefore, he should be able to go back into society and that. And if they still want to endorse him and promote him and that, let them do what they want to do, innit? Me personally, I don't care to cancel anyone. If I don't like your shit, I ain't gonna rock with you in it, yeah? I'm not gonna support your thing, so I don't know, man. I don't know. It's a difficult one, innit? But me personally, I ain't trying to cancel no one, promote people, get cancelled. I don't care. Like RIP to Kevin Samuels and that gala trying to cancel him and that. Well, why are you trying to cancel a man because he's talking a thing that you don't like? Just don't watch. Why are you letting the opinion of someone that you don't know, you're never going to meet before, affect your life, bro? Come on, man. Who cares, blood? Yeah, man. RIP to the GOAT, man. Man was get me. Yeah, man. Sad still, fam, man. Right? Man, no one... Man want to see people do well and that. And a man's on a come up. Get me? A man's on a come up. And then just to get taken away so soon, man. And what annoys me, there's so much people out here wasting their life away. They're not doing nothing with themselves. They're just coasting along. And they all live into 80 years old and that. At least give a man an extra five years to really enjoy. Like, my man was really, um, what do they call it? I can't remember it, but man was really leveling up, like just going up through the ranks fast. Like man's all in futures um video and that. Like, come on, man. For a rapper to want to put on a YouTuber, fam, you're something special, bro. Man feel like you're significant. Who? Well, I need to search who that person is, but I don't know who the hell that is. That's what I was going to say about the people, them's mindset outside of London. When man's watched that um, Love Island thing, forget about how they speak. I could watch Love Island on mute, turn the volume down. I can tell that those black youths that were in Love Island, I know they grow up outside of the ends. I know they grow up around Bear White, man. Do you know why? Because they play them little foolish games, touching man's ass and that, bromance, in, in the bed with a man. Blood, man, them off the ends don't do that nonsense. They don't do that nonsense. So I know them, man, they... I ain't, I ain't even trying to hear what no one's got to say outside of London. For the most part, for the most part. Right, you said Lazar, was it... I'm not a football man, you know, so I don't even know. If I... Oh, hell no. Nah. That guy don't look like... That guy does not look like Kevin Samuels. What part, fam? You know, maybe if he, I need to see it now. Nah, there's a picture of him with hair. Nah, man, he don't look like him. Man. Nah, nah, man, he don't. I don't. I mean, a little bit, nah, but not, not, not enough to say yeah. Nah. Maybe if he had glasses on. Man, Kevin Samuels is a bit darker than him as well, man. You need to have hair and you need to have glasses on.
for the most part, I say no, nah, they man, they don't look the same. Man. Talking about football, videos I made a video the other day, um, talking about like not supporting the Black Lives Matter movement and that. And I'm saying that, like, blood, it's a sheep mentality to be supporting uh, Black Lives Matter. Like most of the people that support Black Lives Matter, they've never been on the road and they're just jumping on the bandwagon and that. I'm saying, don't support Black Lives Matter. Don't be um, protesting and that for something that happened in a different country over here when the Americans wouldn't back us, you know? So you have to check it. Forget about what the reason was behind like Mark Duggan getting shot, whether he was innocent or guilty, whatever. Isn't it? But someone's been shot in this country. Many of people in this country have died in police custody. Bro, them Americans, them, they have never protested for something happening in the UK. They don't business about us. They don't care about us. They don't rate us. They don't rate us one bit. But as soon as something happens in America, England feels like they need to back um America. England feels like they need to, and, and other parts of the world. I think he was even doing it in Germany and these other parts of the world. And that man of protesting, man of writing for things that happen in another country. It's like, blood, America would never do that for us. When they're talking about electing the new president, uh Biden or Trump, people are like, oh, I don't want Trump to be president, or when Trump was going to be president before the first time. Oh, oh I don't want Trump to be president. Blood, have you even been to America? Have you got any ties to America? You got any links to America? Why do you care who is going to be the president in another country? Unless a man's talking about exterminating black people over there, then yeah. But what has it got to do with you? That's what I'm saying. Like people need to focus on themselves, fam. You shouldn't care what's going on in another country. That's people's problem. Man, are worried about what's going on over there instead of in their perimeter. No, you need to focus on what's going on in your life, blood, not what's going on in another country. Maybe, maybe I'm a narcissist. Maybe I'm just some self-centered man or something, isn't it? But that's probably why I'm so focused because I just think about myself and obviously the people then that's close to me. Other than that, I don't business what's going on in the outside world. I don't even, I have a TV upstairs in my room, but man don't watch TV. I don't business what's going on in the outside world. Can't know, for the most part, it don't affect me. Unless they're talking about, oh, you know, sending all the black people then back to Africa. Or, or, or something mad, or there's no petrol and that. Yeah, that's going to affect me. But other than that, what's going on in the... It don't affect me. It don't affect me. Man, like M Michael Albert. So anyway, back to the original topic. I was talking about um, sheep and that. There's a lot of people... That's what I understand. Like, I was talking in this video about people just jumping on the bandwagon and then just supporting anything that, that sounds good. So most people that support teams like Manchester United and Liverpool and that, blood, they're just jumping on the bandwagon. They only support Manchester United and Liverpool because they're the top ranking teams or were the top ranking teams. Most people have never been to Manchester. Most people have never been to Liverpool. Most people will never go to them places there. The only reason why they support them is because they're at the top of the premiership and that. But I beg you make Sunderland or Northampton FC be the top ranking team. See everyone support them. How the hell you support Barcelona? You never even been to Spain, bro. Supporting all these teams and that you don't you don't know nothing about these teams. You only support them because they're banging, because they're popping and that. That's why man rate man that support teams like uh, Crystal Palace or um, QPR. Man like man like Xavier. What's going on, fam? Oh. Yeah, talking about like um, Mike Tyson and that. And obviously the sheep mentality, so people jumping on the bandwagon, supporting whoever's or what's popping and that. 
You got man, their favorite, every everyone's favorite boxer is Mike Tyson and Muhammad Ali. You only they are they are they're only your favorite boxer because they're the most popular boxers in that. But man don't know about real boxers, man don't know about them legends that ain't really got like a big name in that for whatever reason. Man don't know about Ron Lyle, man don't know about Ernie Shavers, man don't know about Sonny Liston, Joe Lewis, Jack Dempsey. The, the, See, these fighters, these are the names that used to come out of Mike Tyson and Muhammad Ali's mouth, you know. But back then, boxing weren't as popular as it is now. Man only jumping on a bandwagon. Oh, my favourite boxer is Muhammad Ali or Mike Tyson. That's only because their name is always ringing bells and that. Followers, man, shit. Most of these names, man, just called out. You don't even, you've never heard of them, blood. And that don't mean because they ain't good. It's just... They don't have the popularity. But just because they ain't that popular, they don't mean that they ain't that good. Anyway, man like it. Say, yeah, the Mike Tyson thing is very sticky, but I heard a story that his older trainer called, called Mike begging his niece. Oh, fucking hell, fam. Boy, I don't know, fam. Yeah. But yeah, I rate I rate Mike Tyson, isn't it? I rate his boxing and that. Um, and obviously, it's easy to get caught up in that. Oh, my favorite boxer is Mike Tyson. My favorite boxer is Muhammad Ali. And that, but there's a lot of men that come before that. Like, do you know about Thomas Hearns, blood? Do you know about Marvin Hagler? These men are serious, serious boxers. Do you know about Gerald McLennan, the hitman? Yeah. No, no, they used to call. I think they used to call him the hitman, but they used to call him Mini Mike Tyson and that. Trying to think there was another boxer as well, one black Caribbean brother. Ah, oh, shoot, man. I can't remember his name, man. Yeah, my respect, fam. You know what, man, we'll put the handle. If anyone... There's always some dumb noise going on outside my yard, I'm telling you. Bro. Where's the link for this thing? Yeah, if anyone wanted to jump into the live shoot uh, quickly, because I ain't gonna be on for much longer, you can you can jump in quickly, innit? The handles in this in the in the chat block. Say no, 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 I'm gonna call in now. No pressure though, fam. There's one video I made the other night as well, yeah. And see, man didn't call out no one's names. This is is more more so about the gal them that make them, you know, them videos, you know them girls that are like them relationship gurus. Man didn't say no girls' names. There's a couple girls over here in the UK and there's a couple girls in America that make these um, relationship guru type of videos and that. And the funniest thing is they make relationship guru type videos, but they've been single for two years. But how, how, the, how the hell does that work, fam? How are you relationship guru for women, but you've been single for two years, blood? Do you know why they're doing it? They're doing it for several reasons, two reasons, yeah? The first reason is... They've been dumped and that, which is cool. Everyone's been dumped. Everyone's been hurt for the most part. Yeah. So what happens is they get dumped and that, and then they go looking online on YouTube for answers, and they get all the answers, all the facts, and they connect the dots, and they understand the thing proper. So now, oh, I'm a relationship and dating expert because I've done two, three months of binging 
over videos because my, my, my boyfriend dumped me and he kicked me to the curb. So that's the first reason. The second reason is more like I pep her up. They're talking to themselves. When you, I've seen some of these girls watch the, the, I've seen some of these girls in their videos talking about, you need a good man. Don't um, deal with no dusty end. A man needs to treat you like you're the queen of England or the, or, or, or the queen of America and that. They're pepping themselves. They're not talking to women. They're talking to themselves. Bro. And thirdly, they feel like if they help enough women, the universe will reward them with a good man. There's a UK gal that makes videos. She's like a relationship guru for the man them in the UK. But she called up Kevin Samuels asking him how what she can do to find a good man. That don't even make no sense. How can you give advice to men about finding women, but then you're going to call up Kevin Samuels to ask for advice on how to find a good man? That don't even make no sense, bro. So those are the three reasons. The girls, then they get dumped in that. Then they go looking for answers. They get all the facts. They understand the thing. They connect the dots. Oh, bam. Overnight. Over the next two months, I'm a relationship dating guru. But two, it's a pepper up for themselves. When they say, oh, you need a good man. You need a man that's going to treat you right. That's going to pay all your bills and that. They're not talking to the, the camera. They're not talking to the girls who are watching it. They're talking to themselves. That camera is the mirror. And thirdly, they feel like if they help enough people, the universe is going to reward them. And that. Dumb. Dumb. Now, the reason why I made that video is because one of the girls actually got called out on it. This girl has been doing the rounds in the UK and that. You know them people, them energy people or whatever, in it. And um, she was someone called her out. She was on a show. She was on a show. Someone called her out and they said, well, how can you claim to be a dating relationship guru but you've been single for like a year or two years or something like i said if a girl is single for three months that's 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 cool but when a girl's been sang single for like two years three years and that you know what they will say ah oh, single by choice in it bullshit man single by choice Man, like Shan. Hey, what? Did you finish the book? Oh, my days, blood. I didn't even realize that was King Richard, you know. I was thinking, why is he saying big up King? Oh, yeah, you changed your name, fam. Well, go on, blood. I didn't even realize, you know. I just see Michael King. I just thought, yeah, whatever, innit? Man, like King Richard. Oh, Michael King now. Michael King now. But yeah, he knows. My man knows exactly who I'm talking about, fam. He knows exactly who I'm talking about, fam. Yeah. And then, like, not even just talking about, like, that person in particular, but how you really trust in someone when their picture or their video is a, is a thumbnail? Like, so, this person is giving that advice on this topic, that topic, and that. But their video is a picture. They don't even want to put their face to the camera. Bro. There are some, I'm, I'm not saying that there's certain people that, you know, they don't want to show their face. They ain't talking facts and that. But come on, man. Come on, blood. Come on, man. Come on. I didn't even realize that's King Richard, you know. Shit. Yeah, it's been the longest though. But yeah, what, hey, what? That's it. Do you know what? Yeah, I'm not even gonna lie. Yeah. So my man said he finished the book in ten days. Um, my mum finished it in about three days. Literally, my mum, my mum would text me. I must have said, oh, and then he burnt. Like, I don't know, um, burnt the food on the fire. I think she did burn the food on the fire because she was so engrossed in the book. Then my girl, she she finished the book in like like six days or a week or something yeah literally man wrote that book all by myself i had someone edit the book but they edited the book they made some little bits better like just little tweaking here and there organizing the paragraphs here and there but then they messed up some of it so it's like 
It's like you take your, your, your car to a mechanic to fix one problem, he fixes that problem, but then he mashes up the transmission or something. So, um, yeah, I had someone edit the book. So imagine, I, I wrote the book, yeah? Then I, I, I proofread it myself. Then I sent it off to an editor. He's edited some bits, made some bits better, then messed up the rest of it. So I had to take the book back off of him, obviously, the part that he edited after I paid him. I had to re read the book, edit that, read it again. And then, um, yeah, then I sent it off for um, publishing it. Oh, yeah. And I think I made a video about that. Sometimes it's best to just do things yourself or something. Yeah, I actually made a video about that. Man, like Brandon. Wow, go on. But yeah. So, yeah, there's, there's an ebook version now as well. I don't even know if I've even sold any copies. To, yeah, that though. I think someone, did someone even say to you the other day, like, ah, oh, how many family members or whatever bought your book and that? They, I think someone must have said that to me when I first, like within the first couple of months when I've actually uh, produced a book and had it off for sale and that. I think to myself, and this is what man's realising that, like, if, you, if you're not stepping out of your comfort zone and you're just doing the norm, you're walking down the normal path that everyone's walking down or whatever, you're not going to really notice this. When you're starting to, when you step out of your comfort zone and that, and let's say, for example, you're on YouTube or you start rapping and that, you, if you think your family and friends are going to support you, forget it. Human beings, it's like, we can only see people one way. And if they start to surpass what we see them as, it's like, we don't like it. It's like, we can't compute it. I don't know what it is about human beings and that, but it's like, if we see someone like, I don't know, if someone is an electrician, then we just see them as being an electrician for the rest of their life. We can't compute and understand, oh, how this person will want to become a banker or whatever. So if you start stepping out of your comfort zone and that, and you start to elevate and that, forget about your family members and your friends supporting you. It's not going to happen, fam. It's not going to happen. For one, a lot of people are envious, a lot of people are jealous, and out of that comes hate. No one wants to feel like they're getting left behind. You know why? Because it highlights the fact that they're not doing much with themselves. Yeah, I think I think so. I mean, the guy the guy said that um, they're going to use my videos and that, so I just assume so. So of lately, I've made a couple videos. I ain't released them yet. They're on schedule. But I made videos talking about like um, the transition, um, the transitioning from the streets to the work. So from the streets and prison to the workplace, because there is a transition, there is a transition. If you're a man, especially if you're of age as well, like 25 years old, you've never had a job ever in your life, because you've been on the road doing nonsense, you've been in and out of jail, you spent half a decade of your life in prison and that. For you to come out of the work, um, come off the streets and or jail and go to the workplace is a big transition in that. Even dealing with conflict in that. At work, if you want, you can use your fist, but I ain't going to get you nowhere. See, the certain man, they've only been on the streets and they've only learned how to talk to black men and that. And they know how to deal with men on the streets. But when you're in the workplace, you're dealing with white men. You're dealing with men that are not from the streets. They don't, maybe, maybe when they're out on the street, they get up to fights and that. But in the workplace and that, you're going to need to learn how to articulate yourself and get your point across without flying off the handle and losing your temper. I had to learn that the hard way. When I first went into um, the workplace, so the first job I ever got was when I was 19. I was an apprentice at Holmes of Haringey, yeah? And within the first four days, I fell out with a man because I felt like a man was trying to take the piss, make me carry all of his tools and that. And in the second week, I punched someone in the head because a man threw a piece of wood at me or threw a piece of wood at the crowd that I was with. And they thought it was a joke. I didn't find that to be a joke. So this is the thing, when you go into the workplace and that, you're going to be mixing and mingling with man that they don't flex the way that you flex. See, that man there think it's funny to throw a piece of wood at people. That man there think it's funny. I know a Jamaican man, big man, yardy man. He went onto the construction site for the first time in the UK and he got kicked off the construction site the first day. Some white boy tried to put a broomstick up his ass. He turned around and he licked him. This is the thing, when you go into the workplace so that you're going to be mixing and mingling with men that don't flex the way you flex, irrespective of colour. 
like I said earlier, when man see that Love Island program, I can watch that program on mute, so I don't hear what's coming out of the people them's mouth. So I can't really judge them and say, okay, this man's from this area and that this is the black man that I'm talking about. But I can tell the fact that them man they are touching other man's ass. The black brothers are doing it within themselves or with other white man. They're touching each other's ass or they're lying in bed with man cuddling up and that. I know you're not from the ends because there's no way you grow up around man them on the ends doing that nonsense. And that. And you go into different, this is what I've learned. You go into different environments and that man are going to be flexing differently to you. What he might think is funny, you ain't going to think that's funny. A white person will um, call you a cunt and that. They think calling you a cunt is funny, you know. If you go onto a construction site, if you have the mentality, oh, anyone that calls me a cunt, I'm going to have a fight with them. You'll be having a fight 10 times a day. Bro. You have to adapt to their foolishness. They think calling someone a cunt is funny. You're calling someone a pussy. I beg you go out on the street and call a black man a pussy see if they don't knock you out. Like, they think calling someone a cunt, calling someone a, a pussy is funny. It's not funny. You go into the world, you go into different environments, you will learn that you're going to have to adapt and you, you're going to learn that this man don't flex the way that you flex. Even in jail. Watching one of them interviews and that, and one of the guys was on, I think, three man banger or at least two man in the cell. And he's on the bottom bunk and if any of you lot have slept on a bunk bed like at home with your brothers and that, someone's at the top, someone's at the bottom, obviously. But you know when man hang their legs over? He's saying that he's in the cell with a man and um, he's on the bottom bunk, a man's on the top bunk and he's hanging his legs over and he said he didn't really like that, he, but he didn't really want to. And he's not a dickhead, but at the same time, you don't want to ruffle feathers over something minor, but you don't like if you get what I'm trying to say. Even shit like that, man flex like that. Certain man, they'll take offence to that, but move your fucking legs from... My bunk, my, my area. No, it's like dealing with white man. White man, they, they, they're just different to us as well. I don't know. Maybe it's me. Maybe it's me. But I feel like white people don't like to give black people as much space. Like, sorry, white people don't like to give people as much space as black people do. White man, if a black man's talking to someone else, they, we like to keep a decent distance, more than arms length. You understand? White man, when they're chatting to you, they want to have a conversation and talk like up in your face and that fam. Like, I, I don't get it, fam. Me, I like my personal space. Bro, I've been fun. Blood, let me tell you something, fam. Let me tell you something, blood. You know how many jobs I've been fired from, bro? I even spoke about it in my book. I was saying that like when I there was one year, what I can't remember what year it was, I think it was 2017. I've been fired, I was fired from so many jobs, I actually worked it out. I worked out how many jobs I'd been to over the space of 10 months or something like that, or 12 months. And I worked out, oh, okay, each job I basically had a, a mortality rate of four and a half weeks. I'd last only about four and a half weeks at each job. Uh, getting fired from job because Get me. I don't flex the way the certain man flex. I know it's like, you see, like, like black people, yeah, and white people. I, I, I believe, because obviously, I ain't been in much establishments where there's a hierarchy of black people. So you've got black people at the top, in the middle, and at the bottom. So I can't observe it that much. But me just knowing my people, we don't, we don't function like that. For example, white man will be. 30 years old and have an employee, yes, or a, a white manager will be 30, 30 something years old, will have an employee who's 50 years old. He'll be talking to him like he's a dickhead. He'll be talking to him like he's younger than him. No, no, no. Black man, man then that I know, man then that's that's like me. Even if we are all younger than the people who are inferior to us, i.e., I'm a manager, I'm a black man, I'm 30, almost 30. If I have an employee, he works for me. If he's 50 years old, you're a bigger man for me. I ain't going to talk to you like no dickhead. Yeah, I'm in authority. I tell you what to do, but I tell you what to do with respect. Man, I have manners. White man don't think like that. White man, you're underneath me. You're a dickhead, blood. Unless you show me otherwise. I've had it before. I've, I've been an electrical tester and I have an electrician working with me. I basically tell him what to do. But I ain't. 
get me in. <laughs> no, no, man, don't do that. You're a big man. You're, old, you're older than my mum, technically, by a few years. And that. You're a bigger man for me. Because outside of this stupid workplace, you're a bigger man for me. If I met you out in the street or at a family function or whatever, a barbecue, you're a bigger man for me. So I must treat you with the same level of respect. White man don't think like that. No, I'm the boss and you're the employee. They will try to chat to you a certain way. Get me. It's the research TV, you know. Uh, trust me. I, 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 I know we're taught to respect elders. You see my neighbour, yeah, some old woman next door, yeah, she's 75 years old. Maybe even 76 now, 77. There were some little white kids at the back of my house. Yeah, I think last year or the year before that, whatever, innit? Some white kids at the back of my house, they're like 10 years old. They were sticking their middle fingers up at the woman. They were calling her a pussy. I can never, no way, no way. Especially, she knows where they live, you know? So it's not like some random kids that live around the corner. No, she knows where these kids live, you know? She knows where they live, they know where she lives. There's no way, when I was a youth man, I will be on my estate and I'll be calling an older black woman who's a great grandma a fucking pussy. Call her a pussy, you know? Tell her, shut up, bitch, and all them things there. No way. Black children, we don't act like that. We do not act like that. There is no way on my estate, especially if, I, if, if the woman knew where to find me as well, there's no way I'll be calling some black woman a bitch and rare, 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 and all that. Nah, no, nah, no way. No way. Because I know as soon as it comes back to my yard and it, and that woman runs it back to my mum, I'm getting a slap around the head. I'll be grounded as well. My mum, you know what? I swear, my mum, maybe my stepdad would have probably said, you know what? Jelani's talking like that. They can go clean up the woman's driveway. You know what? That's exactly what my stepdad would have done, you know? Even, even me saying that, I said it exactly the same, the same way he would have said it. Make him go clean up her driveway and that. If I ever, if, if a report back, report came back to my mum I said yeah Jelani called this older black woman a pussy and that as a little minor nah my mum and stepdad would have made me clean that woman's driveway literally literally I said, true mayonnaise people will feel a certain way about our dark appearance. Yeah. Obviously, you're going to come across some black people who, who, who's rude as well, and it don't get it twisted. But I, I just don't see no respect in, 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 in their community. In, in our community, we got a lot more respect. That's what I've seen. That's what I've seen. Madness. I can imagine on my estate, yeah, some older black woman getting onto us or whatever, but there's no way man's going to be calling her a pussy. Bro. How are you calling an old 76-year-old woman a pussy? Bro? What, she's supposed to be a gangster? Like, what the fuck, fam? Come on, man. And the thing is, what these kids don't realise, obviously they're children and that, so they don't understand. But it's like, a situation like that, someone can end up dying, you know. Literally, because, what? You call me this? Right, I'm going to go and call this person. Then they're going to go to your house, and then there's going to be a war going on outside your house. Someone could get licked, crack their head on the skull, they're dead. They don't understand, like, a situation like that, that could literally turn into World War IV, World War III. being disrespectful to people. Like, <laughs> you, you could get into an argument or something like that and 
let's say like you with your mum in the in in like Asda or something like that. If a man came up to your mum and says, "Shut up, you bitch," or whatever, if you knock him out, the judge will think, "No, nope, you shouldn't have done. You shouldn't have hit him or nothing like that. He didn't pose a threat to your mum, and that it's just words." No, 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 no. That's a big disrespect. You know, if you're gonna come up to my mum and, and be disrespectful like that, you might as well hit my fucking mum. Literally. I told you, like, I made that video, the, the realest Mother's Day present. I had someone, some random people that I don't know, talking shit to my mum. I went next door, blood. Literally. I came home from, I think, Tinsel Town that night, because I was staying at my mum's yard on the sofa. Me and my mum are sitting down on the sofa. My mum's on my left. We're, ch we're chatting now. It's like 11 o'clock at night. My mum's like, oh, Jelani, you know, there's them new people that live next door. And that. Oh, I went outside and started throwing some bins outside, and they were talking, man. It's a man got up. Flicked on my, my night sliders and that. Went next door, 11 o'clock at night. I don't business, but that's just for someone talking. Man's willing to put hands on someone over someone talking, but white people, they were just, ah, sweep it underneath the carpet. It's all right. No, no, no. Ain't nothing all right. Bro. Especially as I don't know them as well. If I knew who they were and I lived there for years and that, then I don't know. If it was just an argument, then maybe I could have left it. I don't know them. i got to show them who's about. Because they might think, oh, you know, they ain't gonna. They need to know that it's gonna be some pushback, basically. You know? That fucking dog next door, bro. I swear, you see that? You see that dog next door? I swear this dog is devaluing. This, that dog will devalue this property. You know, make up so much damn noise. Man. The next house I buy, yeah, if they've got a barking dog, the next house I go with you to buy to live in myself, if they got a, a dog that barks a lot, I ain't going to buy that property. I'm not listening to no fucking dog bark. But yeah, it's a transition. Another transition as well from the streets and jail uh, to, to the workplace is the money. Like I said before, if you don't have no qualifications, nothing whatsoever, you literally was just a man on the road. If you decide that you want to get a legit job, like you're going to be doing deliveries or working for Royal Mail and that, then you're going to be on 1300 a month. There's man I know that's earning 1300 pound a day. So imagine that. Imagine having to go to work for the best part of 22 days out of a month to earn 1300 when you know you could earn that in one day. To have to turn up to work for a specific time, leave at a specific time, to have to take orders from a man that might even be younger than you, talking to you mad at times just because he earns 50p per hour more than you. It's a big transition. It's a big transition. So that's why I made that video because I knew obviously there's going to be people in felt and watching my team. I know I had to make that video because hopefully some of the men, they will come out of jail and, and get a job. They got to be prepared for the transition and that. Because one thing I was saying in that video is certain men, when they all they know is the streets and know how to deal with things with violence, because sometimes it's easier, you know, to deal with things with um, violence. And I'll get onto that in a sec. They won't know how to articulate themselves. So you know what? They'll just keep their mouth shut and then take abuse because they feel like, oh, I'm a black man in the workplace. I can't mess this up. The world is against me. You know how some of us black people think and that if I open up my mouth and I say the wrong thing because I can't use my fist, if I open up my mouth and say the wrong thing, then I'm going to get fired. But yeah, for me personally, I feel like it's easier to fly off the handle and get into a fight with someone, get into a physical fist fight with someone than actually talk to someone. Because the way man grew up as well on the road is that, blood. man never used to talk, blood. Man don't argue with people. That's why, like, I've had neighbours try to even talk to man, like, I'm like, what are you even talking to? But you know who man is, blood. I know you're not watching this, video. Oh, yeah, dickhead YouTube, no, trust me, blood. On road, in the real world, forget about YouTube, man, they're a different man. I don't mean that man go around bullying man or whatever, but what I'm saying, man, a different man out there. I don't play about. I don't play about on the street. Bro. I don't play about on the street. But me personally, like, for some people, no, some people don't even like 
uh, confrontation uh, at all. But for me, I feel like it's easier for me to get into a fist fight than sit and talk talk some problems out. For me, I don't like to talk because I feel like people don't hear. Telling you, blood. I don't know about personal space, blood. Let's see what this guy's saying here. Jay, you said Tiongwei was from your size. When he started get started getting big, when the man then he started hating that all this one sense. Well, to be fair, you know what? Man seen look a couple of little things where people sending for him and that and trying to call out his name and that. See, see, this is the thing, yeah, with the mentality from the man and from the ends, yeah. And I was talking to my friend about this the other day, about a month or two ago, anyway. And what I don't like about Mandy from the ends is this. So let's say, for example, you've got someone like Tion Wen, yeah, coming up. Yeah. Now, the reason why I rate my man as well, because he's been around from day rapping, you know, like some people just see him all over the last three years and that, like, oh, he's big. No, my man, you go and check out his old videos. My man's rapping in the blocks, blood, like just on a beat, on a man's phone. Yeah, literally. So a man's come up from scratch. Man just ain't been put on an overnight success. Like someone like, no disrespect, and I like Bobby Smurder's song, Hot Nigga, but yeah, he ain't talented or nothing like that. Man ain't just uh, blown up overnight, some overnight success. A man's come up and that. So his man then that you see, the majority of them, they've been around from day one to the point where like, if you don't watch that documentary about the T and Wayne team, I was watching it with my girl in my bed and I'm watching it and I actually said to her, you know what, yeah? I feel a bit left out, you know? Like, because all of them man there in that interview, man, literally, I felt like I should have been in that interview, but it's almost like they cut my part. You get what I'm saying? Like, these are men that man rub shoulders with it. Literally, these are men, if I see them on the street, I will stop and talk to them. Some of the men you went to man's school, you get me? So I said to my girl, oh, you know, I feel a bit left out and that, but no drama in it. It's cool, I'm not in contact with my man in it. So all of the man then that you see like in the documentary with him or in his videos and that they're his guys from day one. Literally, man used to be rubbing shoulders with them in it yeah? all 10, 12 years ago. So the problem I have with the man them on the ends and that you have someone coming up, coming up, coming up. But these men that rub shoulders with man, they're not putting money into a man's video shoot and that. But then when a man eventually blows up on buses, yeah, bring me on, bring me on, bring me on. Nah, fam. No, no, no. Because when I was pulling out that five bags to put to put down for this video shoot to pay for cars, the the set, the the, the camera people, them the gyal, the um the, the the mini mansion that I rented out and that none of you lot was invested. You lot was there because you want to be in the camera, you want to be around the gyal. It's a day out and that, but none of you lot was investing. But when I'm I'm big now and I'm making money. You know, like I'm making millions now, whatever. I've got the number one hit in the UK. Now you don't want me to bust you. Nah, that's that's what I don't like about the ends mentality and that. And then you, you got man that because they don't get bringings and that now they want to start sending for people. Ah, oh, F this rare, 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 rare. It's like blood. Well, you putting money in towards my man's videos and that. If the answer is no, you don't deserve no bringings then. Really and truly, you're not entitled to no bringings. Because you wasn't pulling out. See, everyone wants to invest into um, BlackBerry and Apple on that when they're at the top. But when the business uh, that was getting started and no one rated it, no one was interested in, in, in investing in it. Prime example, that GRM Daily. Yeah? So basically, there was a post on Instagram about, about GRM Daily. And there was one rapper. If you was really into the granting, you'd remember this rapper's name. I ain't going to say his name. But you'd remember this rapper. He weren't 
he's not, he's, he's a no one now. If I say his name, all these young youths, all 22, they don't know who he is, man. He might as well not exist. But when I was growing up, this guy's a little bit older than me. I think he's from like Newham somewhere. I just remember that name in it, boom. He had the opportunity when GRM Daily was actually called Grime Daily. He had the opportunity to invest in Grime Daily when it was on the come up. But what happened was he said, and he used this as an excuse, I had the, the chance to invest in GRM Graham Daily, but one of my friends talked me out of it. No, 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 your friend didn't talk you out of it. That was just a final nail in the coffin. What it was is you didn't rate the thing. You didn't believe Graham Daily, GRM Daily was going to become something. So you didn't decide, you decided not to put your money into it. A man just used his friend as an excuse as to why he didn't invest in it. Why are you listening to other men? You're a grown ass man. Make your own rascal like decision. You're a gal for even blaming man for your shortcomings or your uh um, your your lack of um, succeeding in this or or, or, or you messing up in this uh, business venture or that. So anyway, man, put a comment underneath it saying invest in property. People were coming after me, you know. Literally, man, were coming after you when I'm saying invest in property and that. But yeah, prime example of man not seeing things. Or seeing the potential in the beginning, not investing, and then they regret it. So you got rappers, some of the man them, they don't see the potential in you. They they they're by your side in that because they're generally your friend, but they don't see the potential in your 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 your, your talent and that. But then when you make when you make it big and you don't bring them through, they got something to say about it. But like, why was you not putting money into me? Or why were you not investing into me? Why were you not saying, hey, look, air, air that that's a that's a hundred pounds there in it, yeah. Let that pay for the food. Um, because obviously when some some of the men them do the video shoots and that they buy people meals and stuff in it, like lunch and that. Look, here's, here's 100, 200 pounds. Let that cover the lunch for today and that. Or is it is 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 a is a two bills in it, yeah. You put that towards the car that you need to lease and it? it's a little Rolls Royce or whatever. And when a man blow up and that, man are moaning and making up noise, oh this person didn't bring me in that. It's your own problem. You don't want to invest in GRM daily or gram daily when it's on the come up and that. And then you're moaning that, oh, it's on the come up now. I wish I invested in it. It's your own fault, man. Right, let me see. Let me see what I'm going to say. Oh, hold on a second. JT was a bit young then. I don't know. I mean, he's the same age as me, isn't he? Yeah. So same year group as me. Yeah, I don't. I don't really understand what you're trying to say. But let's say like, yeah, when my man's, all, I don't know, twenty something or whatever, in it, and get me his bridges around him or whoever in it, the next artist and that. If a man can chip in, a man should really chip in and that because you don't know where. Where um where this thing could lead, and you know what? Even if you don't know where this thing could lead, if you really get me, and you got a little bit of money to, and you believe in a man's thing, you rating your your brethren's thing, put some money in. If you don't want to put no money in, that's cool. But then when your brethren's big, don't be asking for no bringings, blood. See, everyone want to jump on the band right there. Everyone want to jump on the thing when it's hot, fam. But when it's when it when it's cold and it's not, yeah. I guarantee you right now, yeah. There's family members, ah, Jay, why there, yeah. Dickhead, man's always talking out his neck, talking, talking shit and that. But I guarantee you, if man ever became big, like imagine that like man became big like Kevin Samuels or something like that. You, I'm telling you, family members, if I go to the yard, they'll be taking pictures of me and atting them, atting me in their pictures, you know. Yeah, yeah, my cousin, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck off, man. You see me? I pay attention to everything. You see the people them in my phone book, yeah, or my in my WhatsApp uh contacts and that. Man, pay attention to the motherfuckers who do and do not contact me in that. So if man ever get big, yeah, and blow up in that, the people then that don't contact me in that, they can't start contacting me. They can't start coming out of the woodwork, you know. Man. Nah, 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 nah. Keep the same energy, blood. I'm still the same man, you know. Forget about the clout. I'm still the same man. Don't start contacting me. Trying to be man's friend and bread in man and that just because man's big now. Nah, keep the same energy. 
keep the same energy, man. Keep it real, blood. See me? Before, and I made a video about this, why I stopped um, visiting family members. Yeah, that's what it's called. Yeah, I, I don't know when it's coming out, but it's going to come out soon. Isn't it? Why I stopped visiting family members and that. And it's basically off the back of the fake friends video. And I'm like, what? Family members and friends are the same. It's just friends, you've nominated them. And family members, they're by default. And I used to know, like, I noticed now, like, what? Man used to always make all this effort going to link family members and that. Go to their yard, go check them out of the blue and that. But man never get no invite. It's been four years since I've last gone to any family members' houses and none of them have rang me or texted me to say, oh, yeah, come true and that. Now, nah. from now on, if a man don't phone me or text me, you're not seeing me. End of story. Because my brethren, my family, like, uh, my mum and that, they, they, my, they, 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 they contact me. They want me to come see them and that. So those are the people that I'm going to put my energy into. I'm not going to put my energy into people. I'm not going to grace no one with my presence and my time if they can't be bothered to even text me or, or, or even invite me around today. Yeah, nah, nah. If I ain't in contact with you, you ain't seeing me. 10, 20, 30 years can go by. When I have a you as well, don't be contacting me, you know, blood. I'm like, yeah, yeah, let me see your child. And I'm like, no, 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 no. It's cool, fam. Car. When I didn't have no you and that before, you didn't want to see me. You don't want me to come turn up at your yard and that. So I'm like, oh, forget it, blood. Just because there's other variables and that now, you think you can come in, keep the same energy, blood. You know, I'd love to stay on a bit longer, but you know, I've got, I've got paperwork to do, fam. But basically, the reason why I jumped on this live now is because I was just making a, like a reaction video, on it? So, yeah, that's what I thought. You know, let me just quickly go and see who's like, who's about. I didn't think anyone was going to be coming on today, though. I thought, ah, oh, I might have to leave it till like eight o'clock. So, although I weren't going to come on at eight o'clock, but I thought, ah, oh, I might have to come on at eight o'clock to see anyone. Yeah. Respect for the man they're coming on. The originals, you get me, Xavier, Brandon, um, King Riches, Shan, get me, and the new man them that's coming today. I'm coming off in five minutes. Put down your last comments, yeah? Done no respect later let Xavier fam.
Ah, go on. This was um, a live stream that wasn't even planned, but yeah, man will be back soon with another live stream. I don't know.